I wonder if we could shift gears and talk about your experience of caretaking for your mother and this book that came out of it. So the book, first of all, is the uh, is the fulfillment of a deathbed promise to my mother. She died in December 2006 and she grabbed my arm and she said, promise me that you will write about what we have learned together about dying in this country. And um, I have always been obedient to my mommy. <laughs> and so it took me 14 years, 15 years to get that book to the form that I wanted it in. It, it was five different books along the way. But the caregiving, my mother and I shared a home the last nine years of her life. And the, the huge drama was the last six months. But in that nine years, uh, my mother died when she was 89. So from 80 to 89, um, I, I, was, I was cohabitating with somebody whose eyesight was going, her hearing was going. She couldn't, she got to a point where she couldn't drive and I'd have to be her chauffeur. Little by little, my life became that of a caregiver rather than a mother and a daughter sharing a home together. And there is a balancing act that goes on in caregiving um, that has to do with really respecting the autonomy of the person that you're serving. Like I remember one battle that we used to have when she got on oxygen and she was using a walker to get from her bed to the toilet. And I would always ask her, could you wait until I get set behind you so I can keep the tubing of the oxygen from getting caught under your walker? And she would just get on the walker and go. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it, it was a struggle moment. And I always, I always had to remind myself, surrender, and that this is her process, not mine. But you sometimes get so caught up as a caregiver trying to do it right, do your best because you love this person. Um, but, you know, I didn't sign up for it. I got thrown into it. It's like one day um, I had come home early from an event I had gone to and my mother loved when I read to her. She was, had lost so much of her sight at that point that I would read to her. And we would go on these book adventures where we'd go into other worlds together. And it was charming and it was delightful. And it, it brought us closer and closer together. And we were about to read and she needed to go to the bathroom. I, we were on the, in the living room and she had to go up a flight of, I think, 10 stairs to go to the bathroom. It was a hot day. She had her cane in one hand and a little portable fan in the other. And she got to the eighth step and she lost her balance and she fell backwards and cracked her head against a piece of furniture at the bottom of the stairs. Now my mother was an RN and the most practical woman I ever met. And when I heard the crack, I didn't know, I was over there on the sofa. I didn't know if she was alive or dead. Was she, um, I, I didn't know what I was going to find. And I, I was terrified, but I got there and she had blood that was spurting out of her head to the rhythm of her pulse and also out of her elbow. And she simply said, elevate my head, hold your hand on there and hold your hand on there and call 911. With your third hand? My third hand. <laughs> but anyway, that was how it started. And then I got thrown into this whole journey where we were in and out of the emergency room, the hospital, making all of these decisions. And I just want to make a shout out to hospice, that anybody who thinks that hospice is giving up no, hospice is having angels abduct you to get through the process of the end of life. They are awesome. And I was so grateful that we had them at the end because none of us really know how to do dying and death very well. And that's what I wrote the book about, to help people become more familiar with what is that all about and how do we, how do we be loving and rise to the occasion for each other and respect the journey of the one who's dying and not try to do it our way, let them do it their way. So, wow. yeah, it was a, quite a journey. 